So, the new Avatar The Last Airbender series is out. My opinions are mixed. Is it as good as the original cartoon? Heck no, and it's not even close. Is it as bad as a live action movie? Heck no, and it isn't even close. Approaching the release of the Netflix show, we heard some rumblings of certain changes the showrunners were making. Let me just say the reaction to those changes were measured and appropriate. However, there were changes that I hated significantly more when I sat down and actually watched the show. And despite the fact that I believe the original cartoon was superior, there's actually a few changes to the show that I liked. So I thought I'd discuss some of my favorite and least favorite changes to the series. For the record, I limited myself to five changes that I hated, and I had to think hard about the five changes that I liked. Quick warning, as you may expect from a video about a recently released live action, this video will contain spoilers. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Starting off with something I do like, you remember the reason Zuko gets banished in the first place? Zuko's at a war council and a general suggests a military tactic where the Fire Nation sacrifices a division of new recruit. That is the 41st Division. In the live action, when Zuko gets banished, the 41st Division are assigned to be Zuko's crew. Throughout the show, Lieutenant G here, with those glorious mud and chops, keeps sniping at Zuko saying, you know nothing of sacrifice. When Iroh finally reveals to G the reason Zuko was banished, you can imagine his reaction. Oh, I'm such a dick. I'm not worthy of these mud and chops. Moving over to a change that I hated, and this one is technically a twofer. For the record, I don't hate these scenes per se, I just hate their location. During the trip into the spirit world, Aang comes face to face with his mentor, Gyatsu. They have a heartfelt reunion, and Gyatsu tells Aang that the Air Nomad genocide wasn't his fault. If Aang had been there, Aang would have died too. Aang would continue angsting over the next few episodes over his failure as the Avatar. If this scene had been moved to book 3 during a moment where Aang can finally get past his trauma, I probably would have liked the scene. But in book 1, it just feels wasted. Zuko also gets a moment like this. The scene I mentioned earlier happens while Iroh is waiting for Zuko to get back from his excursion as the Blue Spirit. After Lieutenant G finishes crying into those mutton chops, he gets the boys together and gives Zuko a royal welcome back to his ship. And then Zuko's ship and crew would be placed under Admiral Zhao's command for the attack on the Northern Water Tribe. Just feels like such a waste. May the boys return in book 3, and may those mutton chops be twice at the size. In the episode where Heibai shows up, Aang attempts to meditate his way into the spirit world, and accidentally drags Sokka and Katara with him. The trio are eventually separated, and the siblings are mentally attacked by Ko the Face Stealer. Katara sees visions of her mother dying in the live action. Katara was in a hidden compartment when her mother was murdered. Sokka sees a vision where his father says that he's disappointed in him, which leaves Sokka in tears. Aang himself sees a vision of the Southern Air Temple with everybody still alive, but realizes that he's being tricked and manages to break the illusion. It's after this that Aang runs across the spirit of Makiatsu. Just a bunch of heart-wrenching scenes and I love it. Later, Aang is imprisoned in Omashu. The Cave of Two Lovers makes its appearance as a secret passageway into the castle. So Sokka and Katara trek through the cave to try
try to save their friend. In the original, Aang and Katara are told that love shines the way. When the two turn out the light, they notice a trail of crystals that lead them out of the cave. In Sokka's case, he happens to run into a badger mole and uses music to tame it into leading him out of the cave. So what about the live action? Sokka and Katara spend most of their time arguing when they are confronted by a badger mole. Instead of trying to tame it with music, Sokka and Katara come together and the badger mole stops because it senses the sibling love the two have for each other. The two then use that sibling love to get the badger mole to lead them out of the cave. The crystals also exist in this episode, but it's a red herring that doesn't lead the two out of the cave. Literally, the power of love tames a wild beast. What? In the cartoon, the spotlight was mostly on Roku. Understandable, Sozin was Roku's friend, Sozin started the war, his descendants are fighting the war. It makes sense for Roku to feature more prominently. Avatar Kiyoshi does make a few appearances, but most of the other avatars are absent. In the live action, Kiyoshi is the first avatar that Aang meets. She scolds him for neglecting his duties and puts him on the path to the North Pole. She also possesses Aang and gets a fight scene similar to the one that Roku had in the original cartoon. Roku still makes an appearance, but his role is limited to a separate conflict he has with Ko the Face Stealer. Karak also makes an appearance his in the North Pole, where he reveals that he made a knife that is capable of slaying spirits. More on that later. Aang meets Bumi in Omashu just like he did in the cartoon. In the cartoon, Aang doesn't learn that the king of Omashu is Bumi until the end of the episode. By that point, Bumi had put Aang through a number of tests meant to make Aang think outside of the box. In the live action, Aang figures out that it's Bumi right away. Bumi then spends the episode shitting on Aang over the Avatar running away a hundred years ago and the deaths of the Air Nomads. It's up to Aang to remind Bumi of his old fun-loving self. Dude is still built like a brick house though. You ever wonder, what if some starving man accidentally finds his way to this grove and decides to make himself a fish sandwich? Yeah, these fish are extremely underprotected, considering that either of their deaths could lead to the world falling out of balance. In the live action, the moon and ocean spirits only appear in the physical world one day out of a year, and they can only be killed by specific weapons. The live action introduces Korok's knife, a weapon crafted using metal from the spirit world, whereas in the cartoon, a simple blast of fire was enough to plunge the world into chaos. Uh, yeah, I like the live action better in this regard. This one sucks. In the cartoon, Katara is a novice until she reaches the North Pole. After some issues with her future grandpa Paku, he agrees to train both her and Aang in the art of waterbending. By the end of it, Katara is a waterbending master capable of going one-on-one -on -one with Zuko. In the live action, Katara is completely self-taught. Mind you, she has a waterbending scroll given to her by Gran Gran, presumably the live-action equivalent of the one she stole from the pirates in the cartoon. However, she never trains under Paku, which makes her one-on-one -on -one with Zuko feel entirely unearned. And finally, for something I alluded to before, we have Lieutenant G's glorious mud and chops. Don't look at me like that, I told you I was having trouble thinking of five changes that I liked. Therefore, we will sit here and look at this picture in silence for 10 seconds.
And finally, for the fifth change that I hated, outside of the Avatar state, Aang never bends a second element. In book one of the cartoon, Aang mostly trains to learn water alongside of Katara. He also tries to learn firebending from Zhang Zhang, but of course that doesn't go anywhere. For Aang, it's not just his duty. He seems to actually want to learn how to bend the elements out of the sheer joy of it. In the live action, Aang never even makes an attempt to bend a second element. He never trains with Katara, and even though he seems willing to learn in the North Pole, he never joins any of Paku's lessons. He is just an airbender in the live action. If you enjoyed my random ramblings, please comment down below. Go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the page. Peace.